everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about these. Wait, I have them here in front of me. These are the new palettes from Beauty Bay. Finally, finally got them. I'm going to do some swatches. I'm going to do one look with each palette. I'm going to let you know what I think about the quality. And I guess that that's what this video is going to be about. I'm not trying to explain what I'm going to do. But if you haven't been here before, this is your first video here. Hello, my name is Angie. I'm somewhat organized, somewhat organized, but what I really am is a lover of beauty and makeup. I love everything beauty and makeup related, especially things that are a bit more colorful. So I am very excited to be doing three very colorful looks with you today, but if you want to see some more, hopefully fun makeup videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe because I do upload five videos a week. And yeah, I'm actually just in a very cozy uh, sweater. I just got my period, having a bit of stomach pains not feeling so hot but i thought that maybe some bright eyeshadows uh would cheer me up a little bit i bought these uh at beauty bait when they launched which was a month ago <clears throat> i bought these at launch and i paid extra for express shipping i did ask for my express shipping money back because i literally after almost a month i mailed them and i was like Listen, I understand because they had this issue with changing warehouses and the packing part like okay It took you two weeks to pack my order. That's not ideal. Maybe don't make big releases when you're Changing warehouses. Not only is that probably super stressful for the workers. It's actually kind of annoying as well because it's like Two weeks to, sh to ship out an order. That's that's not normal, but also it took two weeks for the shipping company to get the order to me. And I mean, that is what you are paying for when it comes to express shipping. So I did ask for my uh, money back for express shipping uh, and I got, I got my money back from express shipping and I got my money back from shipping before I got my order. So yeah, that's, I don't think I will be doing express shipping with Beauty Bay anymore. Honestly, I don't know if I'll, I think I'll wait a bit with shipping like from Beauty Bay at all. Beauty Bay has had a reputation within Europe that they changed shipping companies one two years ago and everyone like was like shipping used to be so good with beauty bay and now it's kind of crap and this only showed me that it's crap here too like they're shipping to the us it's also kind of crap so i really wish that they would look into that because changing shipping like that and making it worse it only shows that the reason why they change shipping companies it's not to make it better for the customers it's because they're probably making more money that way and I don't know, I don't just don't think that that's a good uh, customer service, but I paid $11 each for these and they are not limited edition palettes. Beauty Bay has had a lot of limited edition palettes in the future. This is the one that's a blue purple. Let me show you a close up and some swatches. This is the Midnight palette. This one also comes in a nine pan version and a really big one. I don't remember exactly how big that is, but I thought that this one that was the 16 pan version had the biggest variety and it wasn't like too repetitive. And I I think I like this color story the most because this is a purple and blue color story. I will say that I can already tell that some of these shades are repeating shades from that because I thought first it was this one, the Age of Opulence, but it's not this one. It's not this one that they're repeating shades from. It is that other palette that I had the year before. I forgot the name, but I'll pop up a picture here. There are some shades, there are in that one that is in this one as well. For example, a Denim, a Potion, uh, I don't remember exactly, but some of these shades are from there. I'm sure some, some of them are um, like new shades as well, but I'm guessing they wanted to bring in that popular palette within their permanent range in a way that was they were able to do it. And it, I mean, I like the color story. Why did I buy palettes from Beauty Bay when you know from before that this isn't my favorite formula? Because it isn't my favorite formula. The, the, the mattes are extremely pigmented if you start with the darkest one and blend with the lightest, which is what I'm going to do today because that's just how I've learned after reviewing some of these palettes. That's the best way of using them, according to me. So that's what I'm going to do. But the, the shimmers crease on me a lot. So I'm going to see if I can work around that in these. But I like the color stories, though. And then we have this one. This one is called the Earthy Palette. Um, I think that this is my second favorite because it goes from very light to very deep. And it has, like cool tone options, it has warm tone options, a little bit more of a khaki, some more like bright ones like that sham rock and the seahorse one. I, I bet that those will make such a cool bright look and I might do something with that. And I did look because then I was like, oh wait, so is this also like shades from before? So I looked at this, I have the Wilderness palette, this one I still have. And yeah, there are a couple of shades from the Wilderness palette that is in the Earthy palette. Lime, for example, uh, Eucalyptus, and I know I saw another one as well. 
So I think at least three shades and maybe in the bigger one, is it like a 42 pan palette? I'm not 100% sure. There might be even more shades. So if you have this one, maybe you don't need that one. And if you have that old palette spell book, is it called spell book, spellbound? Something like that. And you have that one, maybe you don't need the Midnight. And it's the same with the last palette, which is the Berries palette. And I think this is my least favorite, mainly because I don't think that this one has... Like, now that I look in the viewfinder, it looks like this is really, really light and this is really, really dark. But I feel like this doesn't have as much dimension and variety as the other ones. This is more one-dimensional. I think the other ones have a better variety in the shades. And I have heard that some of the shades in here are shades that are from the Love Notes palette, I think. Or was it the one that came out like, like one of the Valentine's palettes? So if you have that one, double check so you don't have similar ones. And how I noticed that they are reoccurring is that they didn't change the names of them. So that's at least good. So just make sure that you're not buying doubles. Maybe that's what I wanted to say. I will do a look with each palette. I will try and speed, not speed through the looks, but I won't do like a in super in-depth tutorial. And I will let you know in the end of this video if I think this is the normal beauty bay quality if you love the quality maybe you like these or if i think that something is different with these we're just going to jump in i am looking forward to wearing blue that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to start with midnight i thought since i had this listen i'm in my cozy <laughs> and my tummy hurts and i want a snack <laughs> so i'm going to do something blue and i think i'm going to use the purple too right when in rome i tried some new candy at the store I don't know how I feel about this. And I've never had root beer. I, I don't think I've gotten one of those yet. I don't know what that tastes like. Let me know about your favorite candies. Because I was like craving a candy when I got my period. And I bought these because I've never tried them. And I'm like, I don't know about this. <laughs> I don't know about this one, okay? Do I want to do purple going into blue? And I do want to try one of the shimmers because they look so pretty. So I think what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start with this one that is called Voodoo. Oh yeah, that's definitely from that other palette. Definitely. Because it had that like theming. So I'm going to start with that one. And usually these Beauty Bay shadows are usually extremely pigmented if you put them on an unset base. For me, the only issue I've ever had with these shadows have been when I've tried to use them on, uh, like, layering them on top of each other. And that's why I'm not even bothering with that anymore. Because I like them to be as deep and as opaque as possible, and I like them to be as, as true to the pan as possible. And with the Beauty Bay shadows, I definitely feel like I get that when I put it on the base. I've been experimenting a little bit with this Natasha Denona primer and I feel like it's been a little bit reformulated because I was feeling like it was making the shadows look a little shiny but I noticed that if I let it set for a couple of minutes which I don't have to do with my other primers it actually is really good so if you do buy this Natasha Denona primer in this new packaging do let them like set for a couple of minutes and then blend out the creases uh, and then go in because otherwise I felt like I was getting, I was getting like, it was turning my mat a little shiny. And I'm going to blend it out with, I think this one, the pastel one here. We're going to try. On the edge, I'm just dotting it on the edge. And I think we'll go into blue on the inner part, right? And then I am just blending on the edge, just buffing it in. And what I always do after I have buffed this edge is that I go back with that initial color and I blend over again. It usually gives me the result that I'm looking for. And I'll go in with that dark purple color again and I will reapply some. And then I will just blend over the edge to make it look somewhat believable. Mm, mm. Candies, I think I'm gonna use some of this. I've been using this one and I've been blending it out with this one. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of this one in the middle on a, on a fluffy brush and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that over the edge to like help with the bridging between the colors. I personally don't think you need a zillion mattes to make a, a, like a, a look work. 
but I know that some people do love to really like use four different masks, like a really dark and then a, like a mid dark and then a medium one and then a light one and like blend them, blend them, blend. And I totally realize that it's like different styles for everyone. I, for me, it's fine with two mattes. I'm okay with that. But that's just, again, that's just personal preference. So I think I'm gonna use, I think actually, let's pack this blue one on. I think I'm gonna just pack this on. Wait, I think some of my primer might have just set a little bit. I'm just gonna pack this on the entire lid and the crease. This is the one that's called Mist. And we'll layer a little bit of a shimmery shadow in between here. But I also want this in my inner corner. And I want it a little bit here. So it's like wrapping around. Mm -mm -mm. I will say this blue is not like super opaque, even over an unset base. It still is, a, it has a little bit of a sheerness to it. Let's put it like that. A little bit of sheerness to it. I am gonna use some of the purples here as well. Okay, so I'm thinking, I think I'm gonna use this one. It's like a periwinkle. It's like a mix of a purple and a blue. It's called Gleam. And I'm just gonna put that on my brush. And without spraying it, I'm gonna see if I can just put some on the lid and maybe not so much in the mobile part and see if it doesn't crease on me. Because like I said, I've had some problems with these shadows creasing on me really, really fast. Let me know in the comments if you are the same. So I'm just gonna use this on the lid here and not like super pack it on, but like more spread it out like that. I'm so sorry, I totally forgot to show you before lashes. I was talking to my friend Linda from Glitter Fallout and I totally forgot and I put the lashes on, but at least this is how the look is um, a little zoomed in. I did of course use Colourpop Prance in my wood line because that always saves the day. I'm also wearing this Lux Lip Oil in Paper Pansy. Oh, I love these lip oils and I feel like this one that's like a see-through lavender is like perfect for this look so sorry I forgot to show you without lashes but at least it's like a little zoomed in and so far so far no creasing so thumbs up we're a little bit more zoomed out now and I absolutely adore this look I think the contrast between the pastel and the depth is wonderful the blue with the purple and a little bit of sparkle but still a matte inner corner I love a matte inner corner <laughs> I've been crazy about that this last year so I actually really love this and I feel like with this formula I'm just giving you a quick thought of this palette I feel like once I knew that this is how I have to work with this formula. I have to start with the darkest, I have to blend up with the lightest to get the result that I'm looking for. Once I like learned that, I always love the looks I do with these palettes. It's just that I wish that this was a formula that I could also layer. It just doesn't work as I want it to when I do that. But oh boy, do I love this look. I feel super pretty. I'm so happy I decided to go with blue. <sighs> blue is always a good idea. I decided to go pink and poofy. For the berry look, I have been swatching some of these to see what I want to use, and I really want to use this one. It's like a beautiful, corally, bright coral metallic. So I really want to use that, and I am... I think I'm going to start, because I want to have some depth too. So I'm going to start with this one that is called... These are so hard to read. These are extremely tiny letters with no spacing in between in metallic. They are close to impossible to read. I my vision is not 2020, but this is this is hard to read. So honestly, I think it's called journal, but I have uh, questions. <laughs> about how they chose to name these not name them but how they chose like if we can't even read the print just don't put the print there because like it's so hard to read some of them i'm gonna put that in the outer corner but i'm not gonna take it so far up because i want this to be more of a like that pinky coral look than i want it to be like a dark look so i'm just using a little bit here in my outer corner 
to bring the depth to the look but I'm not gonna bring it too far up because I want other shades to take focus I'm gonna take this shade now that is like a it's a red it's called claret I think it is like a red but it is more of a uh, I want to say raspberry red so it's not like it's not like a true red. It has a lot more pink undertone. I think you can see that here as well. That is more of a raspberry. And I'm putting that next to the dark purple in the inner part of the crease. And we are going to blend it out with something that is a bright pink. I think this color is called Lilo, but honestly, I have no idea. But I'm going to use that one. And I think I'm just going to put that on the edge. Because it is like a really bright, like almost, almost like fluorescent, bright, bright, like fuchsia, fuchsia pink. It has a little bit of a red undertone maybe. So I'm just pushing that on the edge to begin with. So now without any additional product, I'm just going to push a little bit on this edge. Small, small circular motions. And I'm just going to blend this out a bit because I want this to be a bright pink look. I think I'm going to use this color under the eyes as well because why not? Okay, let's do this shade that's called Daiquiri because I am so intrigued to be using that one. So I think, am I going to use this without spraying it? Because I will say when I didn't spray it and when I didn't like just pack it on, I didn't have any problems with um it creasing so i'm not 100 percent sure if that was the reason or if the reason was that i had a matte shadow underneath so i'm gonna see if i don't put a matte shadow underneath and i don't pack it on i more have like a sheer layer but no matte shadow underneath is it like i need to experiment a bit because if i can find a way to make these shimmers work for me. I mean, that's ideal. So in this look, I am gonna not have a matte shadow under it, just to see if I need that or not. There is a light shimmer in this palette and it is called Cloud, but it has a little bit of a, almost like a green shift to it, like green shimmer, and I don't really want that. So I am gonna use this matte because yeah, I didn't want that green shimmer, but I definitely think that that shade is it's definitely light enough to be an inner corner highlight for me. I just didn't want that shift with this look, but this is really, really stunning. Mm -mm -mm. So I did some mascara and I really love this look. And I also put in Boots by Colourpop in my waterline because I thought like, let's go all in pink. I mean, I'm wearing a pink top. I'm even having a pinkish lips. I'm I'm feeling this look. I feel very fierce. I like it. So let me put on some falsies. Let me brush my hair and we can see the finished look. But so far, I like it. I mean, this top is ridiculous, but I still love it. <laughs> as ridiculous as this look, maybe. I feel very fierce and very dramatic. I really do love this look. And that is the thing usually with like the Beauty Bay shadows. I really do enjoy all the looks I do with them, as long as I start with the dark shadows and work my way to the light shadows, the only problem is that usually the shimmers do s tend to start creasing on me within the first 30 minutes. So I, I don't see any creasing yet, but it's literally, I've had them on for like, what, 10 minutes? So I will let you know at the end of this video if I was truly able to do something with the, like if, 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 if not packing the shimmers on made a difference for me. So yeah, this is the second look. I really, really do enjoy it. And now let's get in to look number three, which is gonna be the green one. Time for the last look. And I really wanna do something all matte. Here's the thing. I think personally, the prettiest green in this like shimmer in this palette is this one that's called Lime. But that one is available in the Wilderness palette and I've already used it. So I think I'm going to focus, I want to focus around this one. It's called Shamrock and I want to end with like this one. Like, so I want to go from this to this to this then. Is that what I'm doing? I think so. Let's do an easy, easy 
like all green look. So I'm gonna start with pine. Is that gonna be dark enough? Or am I ha gonna have to do ivy? You know what? I'm gonna start with ivy here, just in the outer corner. I don't have a single brush in front of me. <coughs> One sec. Okay, so ivy. Yeah, that is very dark. I'm gonna start with that one in the outer corner. And I'm not going to do too much because, like I said, I want the bright greens to be the vocal point of this whole look. But I also really like when it goes from really dark to really light. I'm trying to do a little diagonal to see if we can lift, lift everything. And if you're interested in, like, lip colors or lashes or foundations or anything like that in this look... Don't forget to check the description box. I will link everything. Okay, so this is Shamrock, which is that bright, like, Kermit green. And I am just gonna pop that. On, like, the inner part of the lid and crease. And I'm gonna meet with this one. And then I'll see if I can put pine in between just to, like, blend them out. Right now, I'm just putting the colors down, seeing how it all looks. I think that that looks really good. And I'll take the same brush as I used with the dark color. I'm just going to take some off on some paper. And now I'm taking Pine, which is that like dark green, like a darker version of Shamrock. And I'm just going to put that in between. Yeah, I feel like that is really tying them together. I am going to use... What kind of green do I want to use to blend these with? Hmm. Am I going to use a little bit of this? The shamrock one? I might. Just to like... Gently blend on the edge. I don't want to do a super blown up look. I kind of wish that this one had like a mustard or something. Because that is so easy. To blend a green into a mustard. So I've just been blending the edges and I did the same thing under my eyes as well. And now it's Seahorse, which is this like minty pastel. And I am just gonna... Have I been doing matte inner corners on every look? Don't, don't judge me. I've just... I don't know. There's just something about how flattering they are. I have, I have, I have, I'm having a moment, okay? I'm, 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 I'm going through a phase. Mom, this is not a face, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> the matte inner corner lifestyle. But no, honestly, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get through this. <laughs> I just love it. And look at how that is just... This look is stunning. I'm loving the tones of these greens, I have to say. And I really enjoy that there are some like more warm olive ones as well, but... These tones are really, really nice. Is the blend 10 out of 10? No, it's 8 out of 10, and I'm okay with that. I'm an 8. I'll live with that. Put some mascara on, and I did put the lightest color that I have in my inner corners. I did put that on my waterline as well. Over some nude eyeliner, and I really love it. I think that this look is striking. It's very green. It's like a green without being... Would I say it's like a true green? Like it doesn't really have a like a khaki undertone. It doesn't really have like a yellow undertone. It is a Kermit. <laughs> Kermit smoky eye. That's all math. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot. Okay, let me put on some lashes. Let me finish this look up. And then we can have a final chat about like these palettes. Because I've been really loving all the looks I did. I think I look amazing. Like I love this look with the lip. And like, mm, I, I'm, I'm really a big fan. Let me tell you, you know, in the beginning of this video, I went into this being like, I don't know why I bought these. I don't even love this formula. But here's the thing. Now that I know, I've reviewed quite a lot of these Beauty Bay palettes. I think three or four. Was that glue? That's, don't look at the glue. I think these are like my fourth, fifth, and sixth palette of Beauty Bay that I'm trying. Now that I know how to work with these shadows, they are truly astonishing. Would I prefer if I was able to start with the lightest and like ombre it, build and build and build? Yes, I would prefer that. But if you start with the darkest and work your way to the lightest, they truly give... Like, look at this. I feel 
amazing in this look. The shimmers, when I, because I always pack them on, because I want the shimmers to be like as sparkly and as impactful as possible. When I used a dry brush and I brushed them on, they didn't, like they didn't, crease right away at least of course after using when i use that look because i wore that look for quite some time like at least eight hours the one with the pastel blue and then the periwinkle shimmer on top that didn't crease on me except that last before i took off my makeup but most shimmers do crease on me around the 8 10 mark like because i have very deep folds with h it does that. And I'm usually able to uh, pat that out. And that is not a problem for me because all shimmers do that. They didn't do that when I was younger, but they do it now that I'm older. The problem with the Beauty Bay formula is that they did it after like 20, 30, 40 minutes. And that is too early. I can't babysit a formula like that. But I will say it didn't do that that early when I didn't pack it on, just brushed it on with a flat brush. Because even when I used the glitter glue, it's still, so maybe it is, because this is a very emollient, like almost like a putty formula. And a lot of the other putty formulas, like for example, the Colourpop one or the Glamlight one, they don't crease on me this fast, as fast as the Beauty Bay does. So I think for me, what will work for me is to use more of a sheer layer. And then they look really pretty. And of course this all matte look. So I'm, po I'm, I'm, I'm positive, I'm positive. You know what? I like these. If you don't have these other palettes and the Love Notes one or whatever palette that they were inspired by, if you don't have those, these are nice. And I'm pretty sure that these are permanent as well. And I have the 16 pan ones. I still think the color story in the blue is the best color story because this isn't the monochromatic palette. This is a purple and blue. And after that, I think that the, um, the green one is the best one because it has cool tones. It has a couple of like true greens, like green greens. And then it has some warm tones, like some olives and a couple of like olivey bronzes down here. Again, also a bit more dimensional. This one is... It is a pink and red, but since the reds are very pinky leaning, it is cool tone reds, it does make it a full on pinky berry palette. It is not as much dimension or variety in this one as it is in the other palettes. I kind of wish that this one had been a, what if three of these shades were like more orange leaning reds because then you could have had it told a different story because you have this coral what if you had like three shades that were maybe like th more orangey reds then i think that i would have thought that this was more now it is a little bit not a one trick pony because you can do a bunch of different looks with this of course it goes light to dark but the other ones are not as monochromatic as this one this is really monochromatic but you know what i like them I didn't think I was gonna like them. I was very suspicious to myself buying them, especially after that long shipping. And now that I actually counted on it, it's not four weeks, it is a little over three weeks. So maybe I shouldn't be overly dramatic, but I will say my friend, Karen Harris, she bought them as well on release date and she still hasn't gotten them. So for her, it is actually a month. So I still think that the shipping is, this shipping is the biggest problem. And I really do hope that Beauty Bay will do something about their shipping because it's not all about them changing warehouses. Since they changed the company that does their shipping, their shipping has been pretty bad. And I really hope that they will do something about this because I understand that it's probably saving them money, but it's also not really good for the customers. So even though I do enjoy these palettes and I'm actually not sad about them now, now that I've used them. And I mean, I've, I really did love all the looks. I still probably will not buy anything from Beauty Bay for a while because that that shipping was just frustrating. It's just frustrating. They did give me the express shipping back though. So I'm happy about that. That was good customer service. I like that part. So I'm, I'm, I'm happily surprised. I thought I was going to go out of this video saying like, eh, I don't know. They're still meh. Now that I went in with expectations of what I know the formula is, I like it. I like it. I didn't think I was going to say that. But you know what? I like it. I love this look. Let me know down below. Did you buy any of these palettes? What is your favorite one? I will leave a link to where you can find these palettes down below. My links are affiliated. If you do shop through my links, thank you so much for supporting my channel. And if you don't want to buy through my links, you can of course just Google them and find them on your own. But yeah, that was everything for this video. Sorry for rambling a little bit at the end, but I'm just a little bit surprised. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again tomorrow for a new video. Bye.